Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Alexi. Um, this is my Twitter handle. Uh, and I want to talk to you about uh, monitoring Mesos because um, that's monitoring is what I do for a living. So um, I work for this company called Datadog, a purveyor of a really nice, cute little dog. Um, just out of curiosity, any customers in the room? All right. Well, I love you guys. Um, I love the rest of you anyway. Uh, so uh, the. Um, all right, so uh, CDO did it. I've uh, been monitoring for a living since about five years. Obviously, we've seen a lot of um, exciting stuff in, in sort of containers orchestration, and that's out. I want to bring some perspective to that um, as we've basically developed monitoring for these new environments. Um, I want to kind of uh, dive into more details what that means. Um, so what Datadog does in a few words is monitoring for modern apps. Um, you can go to our website, datadog.com. Uh, so it works really well for cloud-native cloud -native apps, um, microservices. The stuff we do really is collect metrics and events so that you can analyze it, graph it, alert on it, detect anomalies, um, and then basically have a good sense of what's happening across your, your platform. Um, we have about 100. You know, over 100 built-in integration, and obviously Mesos, Marathon um, are two of the newest ones. Um, they were, interestingly enough, initially um, customer contributed, uh, which means that we, we didn't build them, um, but now we officially support them. And I think this is in recognition uh, uh, of the, the growing community of, of Mesos and, and uh, users, and you guys are uh, today a testament to it. Uh, just in a few pictures, there's some demo time, just, but I wanted to show you what it looks like. Uh, so we could collect metrics, and I'll show you a bunch of uh, Mesos metrics. Uh, we can, data also lets you create alerts and detect anomalies and then collaborate around the data. But this is not a pitch about the company, so I'll skip that. Uh, integrations, we support a bunch. Okay, so why really, so obviously somebody sent us a, an integration to support to be able to monitor Mesos through Datadog. Um, why did we decide to invest in it? Part of it, um, obviously, is to uh, keep our customers happy, in particular the, the, the individuals who, who committed code. But part of it is also because we've seen, actually, in our numbers, so we operate a uh, monitoring platform as SaaS, so we collect all the metrics and it all lands um, in our data stores, we can see who's using what, or in general, how many people are using technology X. Um, and so what we've seen in the, in the past uh, about you know, six to nine months, almost, actually, actually almost 12 months, is an increased adoption of, of Docker. I mean, I'm being Captain Obvious here, but actually, People using Docker, not, not just talking about, hey, Docker containers, Docker, 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 but really uh, using it in various environments. Um, and so th there's this sort of steady increase, which means that um, it's, gonna, it's, it's already in production or it's going to arrive in production relatively soon, uh, which means that the next logical step for, for, for somebody who's using um, containers, Docker, let's say Docker uh, as, as a container technology, orchestration is really where, um, where I think where the rubber meets the road, where really the hard problems surface. And so this is really where you need to be, to, to be able to monitor what's happening. So the, the impetus behind us supporting Mesos um, as a sort of first class citizen um, from a monitoring standpoint really came from seeing where our customer base uh, are going, and we're extrapolating to seeing where we think the industry is, is going. So um, with, with that introduction, we, you know, with that said, uh, this is what the, the overview of how I want to structure our conversation. I want to start with a little bit of, I call it, maybe it's a thesis more than a theory. Um, as we've been building monitoring, or we've been building a monitoring service that can monitor 100 plus different components, we've started to have some method to it. So I want to go a little bit into the method because that'll be useful uh, later on. Um, I want to touch also on why uh, minute monitoring um, sort of messes up 
Mesos applications in general, so these containerized applications, containerized workloads, is fundamentally different from the traditional monitoring we've seen uh, up until now. Uh, and then I want to, so these are the, the sort of theory part of the, of the uh, presentation. And then I really want to get into um, kind of the Mesos metrics, what they mean, um, the ones that matter really, and then um, how, how we collect them. Because I, I think that that's, you know, hopefully that's, you'll find that interesting, um, kind of the intricacies or the, 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 how sort of Mesos and, and has shaped the way we, we collect these metrics. Um, at last, I'll have a little demo so that you can see actually what it looks like. Everybody with me so far? Just uh, please interrupt me uh, if you have any question during, during the presentation. OK, so uh, just a little bit of, of monitoring theory. So how do you monitor X? Um, the, the, the classic, so the, the, the classic present, not the classic presentation, but if you go to any, any, you pick any component that you use today, data store, an application server, um, even Mesos, Marathon, so I'll pick those two. Um, there's, there's currently a wealth of, of metrics you can collect about the performance of any of these components. Um, to the point where it's, it's actually a, a problem um, that the, so if you build a tool, you, you create some, um, you expose metrics for that tool. And then there, there, there could be easily 100 different metrics. And then the users usually have to figure out, well, OK, now I can measure 100 things for a given, for a given piece. Which one matter? Um, and so the in Mesos, I counted about 98 different metrics. Uh, Marathon, I picked the other, so about 90 different metrics. Uh, and that's not even talking about frameworks or services that you run, run on top of it. So the, the problem in there is just from a, from a sort of simple cognition standpoint is it's just too much. You can't really build in your head a model of, I'm going to monitor this service. And any of these 90, so 188 metrics, any change I have to interpret and decide should I act or should I not act. That mental model is just too hard. It's just too hard to build. And so what that means, another way to, to, to express that is they really, and, and that's, I think everybody knows that intuitively, there's really a handful of metrics that really matter. Uh, and then the rest is useful, but not, not necessarily something you'd want to look at all the time or, or, or alert on. And so really, that little theory piece that I want to present is, um, is how to, it's a rational method to reduce that metric space so that you can have, it's like a dashboard in your car. I mean, that's kind of a dumb analogy, but you have a few indicators that represent really the, the, the key metrics that you care about, and the rest you cannot get access to maybe, but um, you can drive without, without them. Um, so the, I wrote a, well, I and others um, you know, wrote a blog post about sort of kind of method in more detail. So what I want to, uh, I want to give you the TLDR um, in, in a few slides. Uh, so here's the URL in case you're interested. Um, I'm, so in this case, what I wrote there is really built on what others um, have ideas of others as well, sort of kind of put together. So um, if, if you got a chance, uh, if, and if you're interested, you can Take a look. Um, so, but the TLDR are so it really in three different um, parts. One is uh, from a monitoring standpoint. When you think about monitoring missiles, for instance, there's really three three uh, classes of data that we can, we're going to collect. Things that are called work metrics, things that are called resource metrics, and events. So. The one way um, we thought about monitoring something is uh, what does that something look like? So we have this, this sort of analogy, very sim simplified analogy is it's like that something, so be it Mesos, Marathon, Cassandra, Kafka, Linux, and so on, um, is like a little factory. So it's, it has a res it, it's going to consume resources, it's going to produce some work. Um, so in the case of uh, of Cassandra, the work, it's going to store data and you can query it back. Um, it's going to consume for that CPU and storage and network and memory and, and, more, and more things. Uh, but really, there's this clear distinction between what, what something is doing, the work is doing, and the resource is consuming. And, and that's reflected. We want to reflect that in, in the metrics. Um, so 
classical work metrics, anything about throughput, success, or error, or you know, general performance or latency. So that's, that's the stuff that any, any system you look, you look at uh, that exposes a metric, you should be able to, to, to identify those. Resource metrics, it's anything around utilization, saturation error, or availability. So things like, I don't know, the classic, res the classic resource metric, for instance, is CPU load. Um, it's somewhat interesting, but not terribly actionable. And then events is the, maybe the third thing that, that uh, a monitoring system would collect, which is um, sort of anything around like high-level stuff, code changes, application version, deployments, uh, so changes, deployments, rollouts, and so on and so forth. Every, everybody with me so far? Oh, it's going to make more and more sense as I, as I go through, if not. Um, so the, the golden rule that we establish for us internally and that we try to push to promote um, is that really, from a monitoring standpoint, you want to page on work metrics. You want to focus on work metrics, and you don't want to really page on, on sort of two page on resources, like on resource metrics, which another way to, to look at that is you don't want to page on high CPU load, for instance, which was a classic, I guess, 10 years ago. Everybody, or not everybody, but there, was, there were a lot of pages sent on high CPU load, and you get one, you're like, okay, well, the machine's doing something. Um, that's, that's great, but, you know, so what? So the, uh, that, that's the, the general golden rule that, that we set. Um, the last one, which is, um, interesting is this sort of a, it's a recursive, this method is recursive. So if you look at, um, and I'll, I'll apply that to Mesos, but I just before, I don't want to um, get ahead of myself, but let's say you look at the database. So the database, like Cassandra, the work it's doing um, is storing data and, and retrieving queries. Uh, it relies on, on sort of resources such as a commit log, um, uh, and, a, and a bunch of sort of workers that are going to, to go store data, go retrieve data, parse queries, and so on and so forth. And so if you look at, so that's Cassandra as a black box. Any of the workers that support basically Cassandra, you can apply the same method again. You can look at, well, let's say the, 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 the committer, the thing that writes the commit log, its work is it's got to be able to, um, to, to write the commit log, um, and thus, it, uh, you can measure its work as you know, how much commit log is it writing per second, and it relies on resources, and you need to have a disk as a resource, and to have CPU as a resource, and so on and so forth. So there's this notion that you can, this, this separation in resource, work resources and events you can apply um, at different scales until you get to kind of a lower layer, which is, say, the CPU. The CPU, um, the work it's doing, I mean, it's computing stuff. Um, the there's not much, it's consuming resources, but usually not accessible. Okay, so um, it's everybody kind of with me so far? All right, so some, uh, I'll, uh, so the, the, the thing that, um, the, the, now that's, that's the, first part of the first part of the theory, there's this notion of work, uh, work metrics, resource metrics, really that distinction, which is key. Um, the second part of the, the theory is, uh, going from imperative to declarative monitoring. Um, I didn't know what to choose for, um, for a screenshot, so I figured that C is imperative and prolog is declarative. So the, the reason for that is, um, and that's really shifting the way you think about monitoring. Um, the reason for that is what I call degraded as a new normal, which means really in, in your, I mean, you guys probably at this point all use Mesos, I'm, uh, I'm assuming, um, otherwise you wouldn't be here. Uh, so there's always something wrong. From a, monitoring, from a monitoring standpoint, it's important because like, monitoring is about knowing what's going on, what's working well and what's not working well. And so distributed applications have something broken all the time. Um, and so that's why we essentially built, uh, I mean, we, the, the committee built orchestration and resource scheduling because you want to work around the fact that the individual pieces are going to fail. Um, distributed apps tasks are containerized, and they're, they're basically they can come and go in, within seconds or within minutes. Distributed apps tasks don't always have consistent locality, so things will move based on the scheduler, um, the resources that are available. Then your 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 tasks are going to move potentially move around. We restart it, respawn somewhere else. So from a um, in the traditional monitoring uh, world, um, a la Nagios, anybody? 
has anybody ever used Nagios? All right. Anybody loves Nagios? OK, cool. That, you, you can. I, you're, you're, I'll still be your friend. Um, in the traditional world, the, 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 the way you think about monitoring is it's all about hosts. Um, and so the, the problem, you say, well, this host runs Cassandra. This runs the database. And that's sort of a fact in life. It never changes. And of course, when I say that um, it, to, to a crowd like you, if you guys run Cassandra on Mesos, you know that that's just not true because you, you know, you're going to lose, a, I guess, uh, a slave or, or an agent that's running Cassandra. All right, you'll respond, respond it somewhere else. You'll rejoin the cluster and start rebalancing. And so the, the idea that um, workloads are tied to hosts, which is the, the fundamentally the model of monitoring in the old way, is just doesn't work. Um, at all, because uh, you just have hosts and you know that they're do you know that they're consuming compute, but that's it. You, you can't s you can't really see what they're doing. The the analogy that I wanted to to pick it, and so you can force you can say no 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 this is I still want to use Nagios and um, I'll I'll use Nagios with Mesos and good luck. Um, but really, what you're doing is this: if you were an astronomer, this is the, the Ptolemaic system where you put the Earth. It's a geocentric system. You put the Earth at the center of the universe. And you try to to reason about the move, the motion of planets if you fix the Earth at the center of the universe, and you end up with these sort of convoluted things, uh, epicycles to represent reality. And so. Um, that's what you end up doing if you're doing host-centric monitoring. So really imperative, like this workload is in this machine. Um, if this workload moves onto another machine, this kind of monitoring, you'll have to figure out, well, is, is there a problem or is it not a problem? Um, in, in a Mesos land, it's not a problem. I mean, a node dies. I, I mean, yes, a node will die. All nodes will die uh, at some point. And so it's a fact of life, and it's, it's no biggie, the whole um, Resource scheduling has been built just to deal with that. So instead, um, the, the, moni the way you have to think in terms of monitoring from a slightly more abstract way is, is to think of, think of it in terms of, of queries. So whereby really when you monitor, uh, when you think about monitoring, let's say, throughput of a, of a given application, you think about aggregates. Um, and so this was tr somewhat true before um, you know, obviously before, before Mesos, where, where when you had 100 web servers in a pool, you don't care about the throughput of any individual server. You care about the overall throughput, the aggregate throughput. So it's, it's just the exact, that, that's exactly query-based, what I call query-based monitoring. So um, what that means is you, you express your monitoring in terms of queries on predicates. So like I want to know, I want to make sure that all, the sum of all running tasks across all slaves is greater than zero. I want to make sure that there is at least one master across, um, you know, running the, in, the, in the very case of Mesos. That, that's just to make sure that the system is going to work. So that, that's how you express your monitoring. Know that there's no notion of ho it's got to run on some host or it's going to run somewhere. You just express it as, as a query. Um, lastly, the, pr the predicates. So what are the predicates? The predicates are usually based on metadata, aka tags or labels. Um, for instance, the first one, sum of running tasks across all slaves. So you have to know. Um, when you collect data, if is this a slave or is this not a slave? Okay, so declarative uh, query-based monitoring very quickly. That's sort of the helios. If you're in astronomy, that's a heliocentric system. As you can see, I mean, it's not. This is an old picture, so it's not quite correct. But if you put it the sun, the sun at the center of the solar system, um, everything looks a lot simpler. You don't have these like, convoluted things, uh, sort of hoops to jump jump through. Okay, so now this was the kind of the the theory of um, behind um, sort of monitoring in the new age. Uh, so now I want to talk about a little bit about key metrics in the case of Mesos, uh, very particularly. So you remember um, uh, I, I talked about work and resources. So at a very high level, what does uh, what does Mesos do? So that it's split between masters and slaves, or master or agents. I, don't, I actually don't know what the new name for master is, but. Um, I'll keep the old terminology, master and slave. Um, the master is um, basically, so assuming there's one active master, one elected master. Um, it does two things. It has to broker resources between slaves and frameworks, and it has to distribute tasks with slaves, and that's it. I mean, at the end of the day, that's all it does. 
and the slaves have to ex execute tasks. Obviously, they're going to do a lot more things to make it work, exchange messages, um, register resources, and so on and so forth. But at the highest level, that's what it does. And so that's the work it produces, which then I think you can apply that to think, well, so what are the metrics that make sense um, for, for Mesos? So for the master, one metric is that there is one elected master. Um, that, that's a requirement for the whole system to work. Um, another uh, measure of work is that you have running tasks. Um, I mean, if, the, if, the, if your cluster is completely idle, you have no running task, and maybe that's expected when you boot it up or, or when you're about to shut the whole thing down. But otherwise, you'd expect to have running tasks. And you can, you can decide to monitor that, uh, monitor changes in it, or, or maybe you have some kind of band where you expect my cluster to always be running X number of tasks. You want to also finish tasks. So is Mesos actually doing something? Is it did it complete anything, assuming you don't have long running tasks? You have lost. So this is really, is it, is it doing something? Is it, is it working according to what, it, um, what its purpose is? The last three are around, um, so lost tasks, stuff that couldn't get reconciled properly, failed or error tasks. And so my, my, um, what I'm positing here is that th these are the key metrics for Mesos. That's, this is the stuff you, you, you would want to be alerted on. Um, there's another one, two, three, uh, give or take 95 metrics that you can collect. Um, actually, on master is fewer than that, maybe another 25, 30. Or, um, I'm saying it, they're interesting, but it's just not as, not, not as actionable. Um, does that make sense, the, the, the work stuff for, for Mesos, for, for the master? And so that's, that's, a, that's a big reduction from you know, 100 or let's say 50 metrics to the master to about five or six. And so that, that, that's a lot more tractable. Um, so that means that if you have no master, that's, woo, that's a, there's a big problem. Or if, if, you're, if you have a lot of lost tasks, a huge increase in lost tasks, um, it's, it's a problem too. You, if you go to, if you've been to the monitoring page on Mesos, you'll notice that they will mention that uh, watching the CPU load on, on the master greater than 90% over a period of time. So I actually think it's not a very good, um, it's not very actionable. Because, look, if you're using, if your master is, is at 90, this is a capacity planning problem. This is not a monitoring problem. If, you, if your master is at 90% utilization, so first of all, maybe it's a good thing because you're getting sort of, best bang for your buck. Um, and as long as it doesn't impact your current workloads, you know, who cares? Um, now, if, you, if you're planning to, to roll out a lot, lot of new uh, workloads on your cluster, obviously you want to do a little bit of planning and make sure that you'll bring that utilization down. But I'm sort of against the idea that you'd want to set an alarm or get paged in the middle of the night if your master utilization goes to 95%. Because yeah, but I mean, maybe it'll recover. Um, if, on the other hand, the running tasks drop to zero, you want to you find out why, because you, that's something you're not expecting. On the other side of the spectrum, we have resources. So CPU, network, disk memory, number of slaves, number of messages, and events, and so on. These are great. These are great to, once you find an, an issue, these are great to dive into to kind of understand, well, is this because I'm, I'm out of slaves or uh, maybe I'm maxed out, so I can't really do the, the brokering of resources, or I'm losing messages because then my network is faulty. Um, but they're not things that, that you would want to alert on. Slaves have essentially, this, essentially the same story. Um, it's even, I would say, simpler, um, with the caveat that, again, because this is a distributed application, you care about um, aggregates. And so, the work that the slaves are, are producing is the running tasks, so you want to make sure that the sum of running tasks across your entire cluster is actually something that's what you expect, not changing, not dropping to zero. And you can, depending on what your workloads are, you can deploy, you can develop different, um, different strategies. You want to make sure that there's tasks that actually finish, assuming you, you have sort of, at some point, some short-lived task. You don't want to lose tasks, you don't want to have failed tasks, you don't want to have error tasks. So these are, to me, the sort of five high-level key metrics. And the rest, again, is about resources. Could be interesting to explain problems and to dive into issues, but they're not something I, I, I want to be alerted on. I don't want to be alerted if a node runs out of CPU or memory or even crashes. Like, 
I don't care. I mean, I, I care, but I don't care at 3 a.m. Um, my wife certainly doesn't care um, when the phone rings. So, so that's, uh, that's a good test usually. So these five, um, five metrics um, are considered to be enough. Now, um, I mentioned metadata, and um, so I want to briefly go over that. So kind of metadata, because this, we're talking about query-based monitoring, the kind of metadata that, that matter are you know, which cluster. If you have multiple clusters, which cluster, which cluster um, this is about. If this is a slave, this is a master, uh, maybe the PID, um, if, if you care. If, the, if you're running a particular application version, a particular framework version, maybe you care about that, you want to collect that, you want to alert, you want to express your monitoring as, um, in function, as a, with predicates on the application version. Or in the infrastructure, for instance, if availability zone, if you run an AWS, you want to say, well, you know, I want to make sure I have at least one slave per availability zone, something like that. Um, so these are key metadata that you need to express your monitoring. Cool, uh, so far? All right, I'll take that as a yes or a sort of tentative, tentative yes. Okay, so how, how do we collect the, the metrics themselves? Um, so um, I'll, I'll dive into three ways. They're essentially the same way, just slightly different, um, slightly different variations on it. Mesos, what I would say, Mesos Classic is uh, you run, you have your bunch of instance or machines, you install somehow Mesos, um, and you run, you kind of manage the, 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 the machine with maybe Chef or Ansible or Puppet or whatever you want. So the, w the way we do that in our case is you install, we have an agent that collects metrics. You install it, you control, um, like two YAML files, and then you're in business. And the, the agent basically hits local, the, the, so the endpoints, and gets metric, metrics and shoves that, um, shoves that upstream every 10 seconds. Um, so that's, that's a fairly straightforward um, way to do it. Any other monitoring system that any other collector is going to, you know, is essentially the same thing. Um, you install a different package. You have to point it to the, at the right um, right endpoints and you start collecting metrics. Um, where, where things uh, got a little bit more interested is um, when we start to think about, well, how do we do it in a more native way um, so you don't rely on, um, you know, Chef Puppet or access to the underlying OS. Um, so uh, we, we, you can run it as a, as a, basically as a marathon application. Um, so you run the collector in a Docker container. Um, that's in case you, you care. Um, that's, the, that's the image. Um, the, and then Marathon will deploy um, the, the, the container that contains the agent on all the machines. And the, the agent will start monitoring all the Docker instances on, on each machine, and also the local slave and missile slave and master. So that's a slightly um, more native way to do it. Um, so the one thing that probably, um, the two things that, that matter the most, I think in this case, to so the math.json, if you, the, the link, the presentation's online, if you click on the link, you'll get the whole thing. But anyway, so we, we, we wanted to set two constraints. One is just run one agent per machine. There's no need to, to run multiple. Um, and just, and that's expressed with these constraints. The second thing is right now, um, as far as I know, and I, please uh, prove me wrong, um, I couldn't easily get the number of instances in the total cluster. I mean, yes, probably with, with some um, curl, but um, not, through, not through Marathon, at least not exposed as a, as a variable. So it still requires you to set the instances um, to the number of slaves. So you have to say Marathon, deploy, um, and I'll show you have a cluster with six instances, six slaves. You have to say, hey, deploy six things. And you can scale up and down. Um, the last way we did it um, I, I, is, is if you run DCOS. I should have out of curiosity, how many people run D DCOS? OK, maybe a handful, two or three. Um, so same as Mesos and Marathon, except in this case, we packaged it for um, uh, in, in the the packaging system, I guess, uh, in the, the universe. Um, it has a simple option file, which I can show you, and then you do package update, install, and, and that's it, you're in business. So um, that's, that's, how, that's how we get data out. Um, so now it's time for demo. Any questions on the deployment? Um, out of curiosity? Okay, cool. Oops, no, no thank. Don't thank me yet. 
Uh, okay, so um, hopefully this works. Uh, yes. Okay, so um, so you're familiar. Well, actually, you're familiar with this. So here's my little. Um, it's actually an instance of DCOS uh, running on AWS. I just went through a tutorial. Um, so you can see, probably better if it's bigger, uh, you have a, you know, there's some CPUs. It's not doing much. It's a bunch of tasks. I deployed a bunch of frameworks there, um, uh, and uh, services, sorry, to, uh, you know, just to have something interesting to show. Six nodes um, total. So, and then I'm running Marathon, um, running a couple of apps there. So I have the agent there, which I'm going to destroy. Um, and hopefully, OK. All right, so it's gone. Um, so I built these, um, this little dashboard, which will go blank in, within a few minutes, um, that, that collects some of the key metrics plus a few more for the purpose of the presentation. So um, you can see here in my little cluster, uh, so six slaves, two of which are really hot, so they're just burning a lot of CPU, and, and that's because I deployed two instances of a, of a CPU burner, um, something that just burns cycles to do some random stuff. And then three masters, one of which is an elected master, the others are, are just standbys. Um, so it's collected. I can get the number of total CPUs, use CPU, disk, blah, 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 blah. So this is all coming from, um, from the, 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 the API endpoints that uh, Mesos exposes. Uh, I'm getting here, just is, is there a master? And I'll turn, I'll turn to uh, no fairly soon. Uh, how long has the master been running? Uh, and so on and so forth. And then container activity is like each time I run container, I, it, lits, it lights up. Um, how many running tasks I have, executors, and so on and so forth. So simple, simple thing. The, um, okay, so this is, um, so this is, if you use DCOS, so if you use Marathon actually, because in the case of DCOS, it doesn't do a lot more beside packaging, um, at least in the context of this demo. Uh, this is what, what it looks like, and I hope everybody can see in the bigger, so, not much there, just deploy a container that passed the API key so we, we know when you send your data, we know um, who you are. Uh, just poor maps, that doesn't really matter. Expo mount some, um, have the container escape sort of its container um, to be able to see what's happening in the host. And that's it. And then just plug some CPU number, uh, memory num number of instances, let it run everywhere uh, in the case of the COS, uh, the, the, the current demo is one public slave. Um, and then here are the constraints. So just, I, want, I don't want to have all the agents, all the container um, running on one box because that's going to mean that a bunch of other physical nodes won't be monitored. Um, and then I have a simple health check. So it's just pretty straightforward. Let me see if this guy, they haven't stopped reporting yet. Um, so now, so now I have my 14 tasks, and my, my thing is, um, is dead here. Um, I only have five applications. And so now I can, um, I can basically run the, um, so this is the, this is the options I just passed to the, um, to, to Marathon as sort of environment variable, as it were, so six instances. And I just run it. OK, and so at this point, we should start seeing um, the agent starting being deployed. And as it's being deployed, I think I, I didn't stop it early enough, but we're going to see, um, we're going to see uh, some uh, container activity here, and then the task running will reset to to what it should be. Um, yeah, and so here's um, another view in the, the same thing. So uh, these are my six uh, slaves. Actually, let me not size by anything. Uh, and, and sort of three masters. And so one thing maybe I can show here is um, these are sort of interesting tags that uh, 
yeah, it's hard to see. But so these are examples of metadata that um, that we're collecting that that is essential to to be able to do sort of query-based monitoring, such as um, in this case, for instance, if I want to break it down. Um, so, you know, I, let's say I'm, in this case, it's the master and the slaves on the same ability zone, but you, you may, you obviously probably would want a deployment in the case of AWS where you're across multiple AZs. So um, getting the ability zone is essential because then you'll be able to say, well, I want to make sure that I have, you know, X alert me if I have fewer than, than one slave, for instance, or zero slave per AZ or fewer than, than, than X. Um, okay, uh, let's see, yeah, so it's gonna restart. Yeah, and that's, that's actually it for my little, my little presentation. Thank you. <laughs> Any questions? Yeah, so the question is, do we have monitoring of ZooKeeper? Um, we, we do, uh, yeah, we do. So the, 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 the thing I didn't get into too much there is, is how do you monitor exter so service on top of just Mesos and if you run so ZooKeeper, how do, you, how do you tell the agent to monitor ZooKeeper? So currently, uh, if you do Mesos Classic, you could just say ZooKeeper runs here. Um, because you're, let's say you manage infrastructure with like a chef or a puppet and so on, you'll, you'll know where they run and then you can plug that in the configuration. If you're, if you're using, um, for instance, Marathon, then currently you have to pass, you have to kind of repack it. You have to derive the, the Docker image that I'm running and just add, hey, also monitor Zookeeper. So it's a little bit, I can show you in more detail you know, how to do it maybe after, uh, after this. Um, it's the service discovery is sort of the the, the hard problem to solve, um, obviously in, in Mesos and um, similar systems. So currently we have a we have a way to do it. It's it's going to get better, but it it's requires a, it's a little bit manual right now. You have kind of kind of to tell it, hey, also monitor Zookeeper. And to do that, you have to build essentially build a new container that contains a new file that that um, turns Zookeeper on. For Zookeeper, yeah, um, I, I can fish them out for you. Any other questions? Was this you? My turn. Was this useful? Cool. Well, thank you very much.